Right. Did she did she make write that one herself, Kelly? Did she write that song herself? Amen. Amen. What about that? And it's a bus ministry, y'all. I've been to their apartment where they live over there and busy with the family, about, about four kids there. That's precious. Listen, y'all. That's what church is all about. That's what church is all about. Mm. It's not a club for saints. It's a hospital for sinners. Amen. Amen. Uh, tonight, I want you to take your Bible, open to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter number 40. Isaiah, uh, chapter 40, I believe it is. And I'm, I'm, this scripture is a prophecy of John the Baptist coming in the New Testament to pave the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to use it that way. I'm just going to use a thought that's in it. And you know, we have uh, youth rally flyers here now. They're ready to go out. A lot already have. Some of the guys went out and put up these things up all morning yesterday morning. And the, look, kids, these are not just for free for you to take home and put in your bedroom. They cost a lot of money. So take these, put them up and, uh, in the post offices, convenience stores, many of you. We also have bumper stickers, and we're going to have a fresh batch of them coming in for the youth rally. These, we pay the Shining Light stickers. All, all of our members, that would be a blessing. If you put these on your car, they're $5. We pay eight for them, I think. And uh, so we're losing money, but I, I look at it like a mission, like our T-shirts. We, we sell them for less than what we pay for them. And they'll be here. They're really going to be nice. And uh, the church is doing this as a mission. And I'm, that's why I'm counting on the offerings to pay for it, pick up the slack. It's not a money-making venture by no means uh by no means i don't get paid to do the youth rally like i i put money out of my pocket into it and so it's not like it's not like a big convention where we're trying you know trying to suck people dry that's that's the furthest thing in my mind if i want to do that there's another way of doing it and you know getting all excited and heal a bunch of people but uh anyway isaiah 40 uh, I want to talk directly to y'all tonight, and then I'm going to have y'all turn the cameras off here in a minute, um, and we'll talk about some things that's uh, just personal with us. Isaiah 40 and verse number 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. It's a prophecy of John the Baptist, but in a, I don't mean this, but that's me tonight. Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. That means you take that bulldozer out there and you push that dirt off the hill and put it in the hole. And it makes everything level. You push dirt off a hill and put it in a the hole, then it's level. That's what that means. And the crooked shall be made straight. That's us, me and you. And the rough places plain. That's me and you. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Hallelujah. That's what we're praying for. And all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Not really a title, but other than prepare. Prepare ourselves for the youth rally. Many times you'll ride by somewhere. I've had people ask me, what are y'all doing up there? What are y'all doing up there? You'll ride by and you'll see the ground all tore up. You know, I wonder what they're doing there. Somebody's going to build a house or something. We all, y'all see that. I remember over there when they was building that new Kentucky Fried Chicken over there on Carbon City Road. And I was over there here by there one day. They was digging over there. And I thought, what in the world are they digging up that parking lot for? I didn't know. But they, somebody had had a vision. And they had, they could see a big, beautiful Kentucky Fried Chicken coming over there. And, uh, and, and people going in and buying stuff. But to do it, a lot of stuff had to get done. And that's the way I am about the youth rally. Uh, the, way I, the way I look at the youth rally is the end back. I look at the youth rally like looking at it from the end back. The end is souls in the altar, young people getting right, people being saved. That's, that's our goal. That's where we're headed. Now, to get there, stuff's got to be done. I, I mean, stuff's got to be done. That don't just happen. And I remember seeing dirt being moved. 
dirt being moved. That'll preach, won't it? Uh, if we're gonna if we're gonna see that altar full and people getting saved, uh, the dirt has got to be moved. The dirt out of our hearts. The dirt out of our lives. The dirt out of our habits. The dirt. Uh, uh, I, I, hate, I hate to think this. I want to believe everybody in here is really right with God. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised here tonight if there are not people sitting in this room tonight that your heart is just as dirty and black as that microphone stand right there. You're full of wickedness and full of lust and full of sin and full of pride and full of hate and full of jealousy and full of that. The dirt has got to be moved. Amen? I mean, uh, brother... You got you got to tear up the stumps. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna make a rope, you're gonna, I mean, them stumps got to be. Able. Oh, uh, oh, Chris back there, he he actually owns that big machine. People ask me who's machine. Raise your hand, back there, Chris. Most of y'all know Chris. Uh, uh, he's he has he has a contracting business and uh, he travels most of the time. But he's been he's helped us so much here. Man, that big old thing he's got out there, it'd take a stump as big as that piano right there, and he'll reach in there and he'll pull it. And yank, and it'll just barely move. And it'll pull it, yank, and it'll just barely move. And you can feel the ground shake, man. I'm going to, wow, that's, that's power right there. And finally that thing will dig down in there, and up comes that stump, and throws it away. That's what some of us need to do before the youth rally with junk that's down in our heart. I ain't talking about getting down here and just saying, well, Lord, I'm sorry, and then going right back tonight letting that big old root uh, stay, stay in your life. I know about dig it out. How you dig it out? Fasting. How you dig it out? Praying. How you dig it out? Uh, uh, agonizing with God. How you dig it out? Get down in the prayer closet and brother dig, dig with the Holy Ghost bulldozer and say, God, get that junk out of my heart. God, get that junk out of my heart. God, get that junk. I, look, I understand we're human. I understand there'll never be a time in this world when we completely have the victory over sin. I understand you can't help if the devil puts thoughts in. I understand all that. There is a big difference in that. And just tonight going home and putting on your phone and watching a bunch of trash and filth and wickedness and rap music and rock music. Listen, you kids, God ain't going to bless y'all if you're saying if you fill your head full of rap music. God's not going to bless you if you uh, uh, fill your head full of wicked stuff like that. You got to root that stuff out. You got to root that stuff out. Amen. You say, well, I don't want to give. Well, that's because you don't care enough about somebody going to hell. You'd rather pet your own little bratty flesh and get whatever you want and, and let the world die and go to hell. Somebody, somebody has got to pay some kind of price. They did when I got saved. They did when you got saved. Somebody paid a price that got me saved. Somebody paid a price that got you saved. Somebody paid a price. There was a, somebody, uh, let's see, who was it? Last night, last night in South Carolina, young lady, she about 30, I reckon. Uh, you know, you know you're getting old when you call a 30-year-old young lady. Uh, uh, you know, uh, but I do. Uh, she, she's 30, and uh, she said, Brother Danny, I just want you to know that you was preaching the night I got saved back in not like 1990, early 90s, something like that. I said, is that right? She sang a special song last night. And I said, well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's good. And it was a blessing to my heart. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. I couldn't tell you that night. Lord, it was probably, it was probably some day when I prayed all evening and instead of doing what I would want to do in my flesh, it was probably some day when I, when I gave up something or fasted or something and I went down there and preached. And now, 15 years later, that young lady is serving God in church. Now, you know what that is? Now, I'm, not, I'm not boasting or bragging. It's not me. It's just we've got to get ourselves I mean, you you can't just say, "Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea stump." I mean, you got to dig them things out, brother. I don't think got to be dug out. If you could do that, I'd say, "Be level over here," and all this dirt would be gone, and and we could build a building up. Be thou building, just be thou. Hey, Amen. I mean, if you can name it, claim it, brother. Uh, come around, man. Look, look. If you if you can name it and claim it, and 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 speak into existence. A big building over there for us to use. We'll write you a check for one hundred thousand dollars. Tell all the TV preachers I said that. Write you a check, one hundred thousand dollars, if you can speak a building into existence over there. <laughs> I'm a bunch of nuts. You know what they do? They make their living off poor people. 
They, they make them poor people feel like, send me your money and God will bless you. That's a crooked man. You, I'd rather stand before God as a meth dealer, brother, uh, than stand there as a, a, a pr- crooked preacher taking advantage of people that's poor and promising them a miracle if they'll give me money. I ain't mean to get off on all that. But, brother, there ain't no shortcuts in this business. Somebody got to pay a price. Somebody got to uh, give up some stuff. We got two weeks, people. We got two weeks. Make the crooked places straight. Make the high places low, the low places high. Hey, amen. Get it out. Get it out. Make the rough places plain and the hills low and the valley exalted. Prepare a way so the Lord can come in that place. Now look, look, we gotta we gotta do this. We, there's gotta be some things tore up. Before you can build something, you gotta tear up something. I remember we built that big building at New Mana, and the, the ground was real soft right in there. And we dug and dug and dug, and it got the more we dug, the softer it got. And like a swamp. And I thought, oh, Lord. And the city, they come down there, and they said, now, Danny, we're not going to let you build a building here, so you're going to have to build a, a dig a ditch. Uh, a ditch was uh, 112 foot. That's what that building is, 112 one way and 80 the other way. And uh, they were going to build a 112 foot ditch. 15 feet in the ground, about as wide as from here to there, and fill it half full of concrete. I said, what? And they said it was going to cost $15,000 back in the late 80s. That would be a good $75,000 now. And, and we spent $75,000, and I didn't see nothing. Where's the building? I don't see a blessed thing. You, you know, you spent a lot of money before you ever even see anything, uh, if you see walls going up and roof, boy, you're getting you're getting somewhere. Then you think, man, I, that looks like a building. But what 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 you hate is spending all that money when you don't see nothing and putting in a hole in the ground. But you got to have a foundation, and so that's what we had to do. And I didn't like it. You got to break it up. You got to break it up. We got to dig down. We got to get dig down. We now have next Friday. I can see it. I can see this week and over next Sunday and next Friday evening, a week from Friday. I can see the youth rally, y'all. And we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We have to de- get that evil heart fixed up. Get those wicked habits fixed. Yeah, you want God to bless our choir? When they get them saying, man, everybody here should have been with us at McDonald's the other night. <laughs> Yo, listen. Everybody listen. Everybody listen. You should have been with us at McDonald's the other night. The Holy Ghost fell down. The power of God moved in there. Lord, it's about as good as we have, what's the service we had at church. And I mean, the employees were, were all clapping and they were raising their hands. It was like camp, a little bit like camp. It felt like a little camp there for a little bit, in there a little bit. You know what? Those Rockingham kids, our kids, there's something special when they all get together. It's like peanut butter and jelly. I don't know which one's the peanut butter and which one's the jelly, but I know who the bread comes from, us. Uh, uh, we have to pay for it, and they're the peanut butter and jelly. Uh, but I'm telling you tonight, listen, people, it, you got to dig up some stuff. You got to dig up some stuff. You, you can't, you cannot, you cannot fill your head. I preached about dating the other night, about boys and girls being alone. You can't, and I got on that real heavy about it. You can't, you can't be with a girl uh, or a boy that you really like alone for a period of time and not sin. You can't do it. You can't do it. Just get it through your head. You can't. I can't. David couldn't. Samson couldn't. Nobody else can. It can't be done. Some people say, well, old Joseph, he run. Old Joseph, that, that old hoe grabbed him, and he left his garment and run out the door. That's exactly right. He run. You say, boy, Joseph was a good man. He wasn't no better than me and you. She said, lie with me. And she didn't mean let's go tell a lie. She said, lie with me. And he said, can't do it. Can't, you're, the, you're the king's wife. I'm out of here. Bam. Joseph did not say, well, now look, we can't sin, but we'll, we'll lay on the couch and watch a movie if you want to. I mean, we'll just lay here and hug up and watch a movie if you want to. But no, we're not going to sin. Somebody tell me what would have happened. If I, and guess what the movie's got in it? Everything they're not supposed to be doing. Say amen, people. You know it's the truth. You can't trust yourself 
out that door right there in the wrong situation with the wrong circumstances with the wrong you mean you mean tell me two young people that are burning already and lust with each other can lay on the couch and watch a movie and and then and the movie's full of wickedness too and that not throw guys on the fire and you're going to sin you're going to sin uh, you're going to sin I'm telling you you better say you can't you can't play with sin you run from it Bible says flee youthful lust I'm out of here I'm out of here well, I'm strong. No, you're not. No, you're not. You ain't, I ain't. None of this flesh, all flesh is grass. I didn't plan on that. I had no idea I was going to say that. I'm just saying, we got to get the dirt out. Let me say something else. This is all the adults that's already married. We, we got to stop some of this bickering. We got some bickering going on in this church. Golly, man. This is a funeral home. <laughs> Little bickers here and there. Bickering about this and bickering about that. <laughs> you thought I was going to say the other word. But same thing, same definition. Bickering means arguing about petty and trivial matters. I've never seen it fail one time yet. When youth rally comes, church members start bickering with each other. Well, I think we ought to do this. Well, I don't. Well, I do. Well, I think. Well, I, I, just, I go. I ain't going. They expect me to. Blah, blah, blah. And it's always around the food, or it's always around the choir, or it's always around. I've been doing this since 1986 or seven, I believe, was the first youth rally. Never seen it fail yet. Somebody gets mad, quits church. Uh, we had we had a guy one time many many years ago. Fussing about the food. They want to do the food one way. They want to do the food the other way. And got mad and quit the church. Quit the church. I seen another couple one time come real good. Sit right over there. Real faithful. And, and the youth rally was so much pressure and so much demonic activity like, like we had in here this morning. There were so many demonic spirits working that they let it get to them. And they've never been back since. And look, this ain't, this ain't a spiritual this ain't a spiritual uh, happy place, uh, romper room, fun. Uh, we're, we're in a battle. We're in a war. This is war, brother. You got to get your sword and fight. Be brave against all evil. But quit your bickering. Quit arguing about petty stuff. You young people, quit your bickering with each other. You teenagers. Teenagers, quit bickering at each other. Well, I don't like her no more. She's not my friend no more. Well, she likes the boy that I like. I like the boy that I like. Did you know what he said? I didn't like what he said. Just hush. Husbands and wives, quit bickering at each other. You know, you know the Bible said if a husband and wife bickers at each other, that their prayers are hindered. You're better off just not to talk. And nobody likes to be in a home where you're not talking. But it's better than fussing. Amen. Just bickering. Why don't you go? Shut up. Well, you know, Brother Danny, I don't care what he said. I ain't going. I changed my mind. See, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that happens. Stuff like that happens. Well, get ready. My goodness. I just, we're not doing this next year, I can tell you right now. See? Stuff like that. Acting like a big baby. A, a big crybaby. Look, people, we are in a rescue mission. We are the, we're the spiritual EMS. We are the first responders in the work of God. We're, we're supposed to get our hands dirty. We're supposed to get our knuckles bloody. We're supposed to get uh, mud on our britches. We're supposed to get, uh, we, we, we need, we need uh, the, the dirt move. Uh, we need to get tore up over some things. We need to quit bickering at each other. You do your job. At, here's a, I, uh, nobody mind when I say this. You say, you say, well, you're up there talking to me. I'm not, but maybe the Lord is. And I hear it every, every year, I'm the only one doing anything. Why don't somebody help me? That's Martha and Mary. Remember that? Beware when you're doing something for God of thinking, why don't nobody help me? How do you think the bus workers feel every week? Amen. We all feel like that. I feel like that once in a while. And I say, get away from me, devil, because I know it's the devil making me feel like that. That's the devil. The devil come to you and say, you're crazy. You only put all that work on you, and you're the only one doing anything. Everybody else just having a big time. You're a fool for letting that church use you like that. See? That's, that's the devil telling you that. Look, buddy. Look, people. 
When you take one of these things like right here, you're not a slave of a cult. You're out here saying, I hope somebody sees this that's on fentanyl and comes and hears Barry Spears. God, I'm doing this for you. If you put mustard on a hot dog, I'm putting that on there for Jesus Christ. I'll get my reward over there in heaven one of these days. If I drive a bus and have to miss supper and I get home late and I don't get the fellowship with all my friends from out of town, I don't care. I'm doing this for the Lord Jesus Christ because of what He done for me on Calvary. It ain't like good night. I'm the only one around here doing it. Jump up and down and say, Glory to God, I get a chance. I get an opportunity to participate in the greatest soul winning effort in Burke County in the whole year. Now, I have to preach myself that too. Because honestly, sometimes I get like that. I think, good Lord, it'd be nice to have some help. And I know it's the devil talking to me. Because there are two of you that help me sometimes. But, but I, I can't get hung up on that. I'm just kidding. I, I mean, hey, look, we all got jobs. You got jobs, you got responsibility, you got kids, you got homework, you got uh, uh, you got activities, you're a part of, I mean, I get it, I get it, but I'm telling you tonight, quit your bickering. The Bible said, you'll bite, if, if you bite and devour another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. You just bicker, bicker, and bicker until there ain't nothing left. So do your job willingly, do your job uh, in a joyful spirit. I mean, don't you don't give somebody. I want a hamburger. Throw it in their face. <laughs> You're supposed to be a testimony. Look, look. You know what we are? We're a testimony to all these people. I've had people tell me they said, "Brother Danny, I just want you to know your people have made us feel so well." Man, that just flooded my soul with joy, and I know it wasn't easy. I know it wasn't easy. Y'all done that food? Oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I, I've had people tell me that. And uh, and I've had people tell me other stuff. I got a message this week about one of our people in this church. <laughs> Let's not quite it in. Suffice it to say this. Go ahead and turn them things off. Now we'll talk. Suffice it to say this.